Hey everybody, Rob Coe here, talking a little bit about what's new with Inventor 2011. And in this section we're going to talk about tooling and mold, and the mold flow technology that we've built into Inventor Professional 2011. Now let's take a look at the material library here. What a tremendously detailed material library that we have. Let's take a look at the thermoplastics of the material. We've got shrinkage property, filler property, recommended settings, so on and so forth, and, and, and even environmental impact of the uh, uh, of the material that that we're selecting. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the results of our initial analysis and as you can see the quality prediction tool allows me to determine areas that are sketchy if you will as it comes to my uh, as it pertains to my design. So how, what problems can occur with a high stress? Well it can c cause some cracks in the plastic and we certainly don't want that and gives you some some ideas as to how we can go about changing the uh, the design of this part to to reduce the opportunity for error here. Now let's take a look at and see what the weld lines look like. Now as this part is being filled, um, as the plastic comes together here, as you can see, there's uh, it's trapping some air there and and, and possibly giving me a, a weld line problem here. So I need to determine as a designer as to whether or not you know what's the risk factor there, and determine if I need to change the design of this. Now let's go ahead and go through the process of creating the core and cavity. First thing I need to do is, is uh, d define the workpiece setting here. And really easy to use, easy to understand dialog box. And then I'll go on to creating the patching surface. Now those of you who have done this manually uh, in, in the past or are currently doing this manually, um, you're going to see some of, the, some of the things that, you know, you're going through and projecting edges and um, using a lot of project geometry and creating new surfaces and doing a lot of part splitting here um, usually but the tools that we have here are, are, are automating that process for, for, uh, for the specific purpose of creating a core and cavity. So I've gone through, I've created a patching surface, now I'm creating a runoff surface and again it's just analyzing the, the, uh, the part. Now I'm ready to go ahead and create the core and cavity. As I preview it, it says, "Well, hold on, wait a minute. We've got we've got an edge set here that hasn't been defined, and, and you need to create the patching surface for that hole." Well, let's go ahead and do that. Find that hole. Now that hole is a small hole, and, and and really easy to overlook during the process of creating corn cavity. And, and had we forgotten that, uh, that's a, it's a that's a costly error. So let's go ahead and preview what this is going to look like, and and there we go. Let's go ahead and pull this out, clear body separation, and those of you that have been doing this manually may now pick your jaws up off the floor, um, because yes, it was indeed that easy. All right. So we've got our core and cavity created. Let's go ahead now and take advantage of some new functionality here, and that's the uh, the patterning of these. Now, I, I with 2011, I now have the ability to do a unique instance of this. So if we wanted to flip these around, I now have uh, you know the uh, the base cover mold base one and uh, cover mold base two, and it's creating a unique instance of those during the pattern. Now let's go back into the mold design here, and let's determine the mold base that we're going to use. Are we going to use Futaba? Do we want to use a DME? Maybe we're going to grab a, uh, a Hasco here. And which which Hasco are we going to grab? Let's grab a Hasco number one. Determine the size. And basically just select a reference point. And once I place that reference point and hit OK here, it's going to bring in a number of components for the mold base. Look at that. I didn't have to create them, A. Um, I pulled them from a library and it automatically positioned them relative to my core and cavity so that it's an it's fully fully assembled. I didn't have to place a bunch of constraints. I didn't have to create the positional representations. They were created for me. I've got a master level representation. I've got a product open, injection, close. Now, with this we're going to be able to dynamically simulate the motion of the mold base assembly to easily examine the mold base components for clearance and interference. That that's significant advantage versus um, doing this <laughs> manually. 
So let's go ahead and go to the free drag mode. And as you can see, I, I want to make sure that these things are gonna are, are gonna operate correctly. And and you know when we go to eject the part, it, it's actually pushing the uh, the part out of the assembly here. All right, let's go back to a master. And there we go. Now, as you can see, the powerful simulation tools inside of an Autodesk Inventor 2011 merged with the MoldFlow product have been enhanced to make your life easier for you to create and validate multiple design iterations.